Hello guys, welcome to the latest episode of Every Platform and welcome to a very rainy Bowes Park located on the Hartford Loop Line where today we will be covering the Hartford Loop Line and it's just this line we're doing today. Um, today here you'll be seeing services from Great Northern. You should also be seeing some stuff at Stevenage when we get there. Um, but other than that, that is what we've got today. Uh, there's quite a lot of stations on this line so we're not short of stations, it's just one line we're covering. Here is 717022, this is on a Great Northern service to Moorgate from Stevenage. So, uh, today here at Bowes Park as well, there's quite a few London stations, there's also some Hertfordshire stations, so we've actually got a good mix of everything, which should be nice. So, uh, if you do just check out any updates on trips and posts, check out my Facebook group. Check out the pin post on my group, because that has all the trip information on it, and I update that every time a trip is done. Check out my Instagram for story updates as to where I am and what I'm doing, and also check out my Twitter at kt 96 which is now called X, which we all know. So there's 717022 heading out. Let's talk about the station in a minute, but let's uh, begin today's episode of Every Platform here at Bowes Park. Enjoy. Right, so some facts about the station. So Bowes Park is located a short walk away from Bounds Green Station, which is uh, located on the Piccadilly line. Uh, the ticketing system is quite interesting because this because Bounds Green actually acts as an out of station interchange, which some stations do have. A uh, good example of an out of station interchange would be Yeovil Pen Mill and Yeovil Junction. Yeah. They allow you to walk between them. Same as. No, I think I think that's probably the best one. Probably St Budo, Victoria, and Ferry Road are exactly the same as well. But they Ferry Road hardly gets a service, so you know. But probably the Yeovil one is probably the more notable one. Um, it's also the only station on the entire line that's got an island platform. Uh, the rest of them don't. So, yes. Other thing to note is that about uh, Bose Park is that uh, just to the north of the station, you can see an LNER Azuma. Um, it's a single siding. There's basically Bounds Green is built in a way, a really, really stupid way, where you cannot access it from the northbound. So you have to go up here where that Azuma is and then turn back around to get into Bounds Green or out of it. You have to come out here where they do the turnaround. So that's where about, that's Bowes Park. It's a weird layout and I can't understand it because you, you really you should think it's easy enough just to get into Bounds Green in the more conventional way through the northbound line, but there we go. Anyway, so for some reason that 717 has just stopped there. I reckon it's trying to get onto the main line, but anyway. So that is Bowes Park. It's a nice little station. Uh, we're going to visit some others today, so we'll update you when we're on the move. We are getting... Liam, what are we getting from here? Moss! Liam is here. Alex is here. Alex is trained. And so is Jasper. Hello. So, a uh, GW Rail fan. So yes, uh, let's, let's carry on. We'll update you soon. Okay, we're now on board um, DW Gemini 2 again from the last video we were on this as well. The last ever platform, uh, but we're on this one now, and we're heading over to um, Palmer's Green Station. You can see it's an Arriva London one. So there is a London street light, and there's more on that later. That'll be good fun. But yeah, so I'll update you uh, when we get over to. Uh, there's the engine. Sounding nice. Update you when we get to Palmer's Green. Right, right we're out now. DW526 on the 121 to Enfield Island. Um, and we're now going to head to Palmer's Green Station. That was a lovely bus ride, even though it was only a short time. Update you soon. 
Okay, welcome to station number two of the day, Palmer's Green. Okay, so this is still on the Hartford Loop Line. Uh, station was uh, used to be called Palmer's Green and Southgate. That was its original name. Um, consists of two platforms, numbered one and two, with a, what well, used to be, a pair of tracks in between, but obviously that's now changed. Um, that's what it used to be. It said two tracks in between, but it's not. Anyway, um, interestingly enough, this station's got a weird fact about it, is that in the station car park, on some Sundays, they do a community market in the station's car park, which is literally over there. You can see it probably better through there. So basically over there, just in this area, they, they run like markets and stuff. And uh, they have done that in the past. That's a Sunday thing. But this station, they have it, uh, Palmer's Green Market. Um, it's quite a nice little area, to be fair, of, of London. So I can understand why it's happened. Um, but yeah, the other thing is uh, London buses, 121, W6 and 616, they all serve here. More regular ones would be the 121 and the W6. The 616, I believe, is a school service because it's a six number in London. Anyway, every 30 minutes service here with Stephen to Moorgate. That is Palmer's Green, and we're now going to be heading over to Winchmore Hill. Update you soon. Okay, arriving now is the 11.40 Great Northern Service of Stevenage from Moorgate. 717022. And we're going to take this to Winchmore Hill. So I'll update you shortly. Okay, we're now here at Winchmore Hill and departing at now is 717022 on the 11.43 to Stevenage. There goes that one, and uh, we'll update you in a moment. Okay, welcome to Winchmore Hill Station, which before the arrival of the railway was known as Middle Lane. So that's interesting. It was on Station Road, which used to be called Middle Lane. Random fact. Um, we are in the London borough of Enfield in Fair Zone 4. Um, originally, when it opened in 1871, uh, the station was almost identical to that of Palmer's Green, the neighbouring station, which obviously you can see up there. However, in 1965, that northbound side of the building was demolished due to subsidence. Um, but in the 1970s, the station got a bit better. And on the southbound platform, a newsagent and a sweet shop opened. Um, quite interesting. Uh, just beyond the base of the stairs down to the platform, but in 1980, they got rid of it. So, yeah. This station's had a bit of a happy, sad, happy, sad, happy, sad story. So yeah, it's gone through the motions and uh, yeah, otherwise a uh, nice little station. And uh, yeah, that is basically Winchmore Hill. I'll update you in a minute. Just very quickly as well, as we're outside the station, the two bus routes that serve here are the W9 and the 456. Both very local buses. W9 is operated by uh, London E200s and E200 MMCs, both 8.9 meter minibuses. And the 456 is Streetlights. So it's an all single deck station that it's served with. But yes, that is Winchmore Hill. We're leaving now. And we're gonna get the W9 to Grange Park. We'll update you when we get there. Right, so now I'm boarding Enviro 200 with the W9, heading over to Grange Park on E200. Winchmore Hill, yeah. Yeah, Winchmore Hill's going to park on this.
see when we get to Grange Park. Oh, hello. E400 EV. Very nice. I'll take you soon. That E200 was an absolute state. Simply put, I think the three of us can agree, that yeah, E200 that was a state. It was hoovering at five miles an hour at the slightest hit. Yeah. yeah I don't know what I'm on about. Alex, what did you think of it? Uh, it sounded a bit messed up, I'm not going to lie. There was it also did. a light was, hanging down yes. from just some wires that hadn't been nailed back on. That was quite yes. Also, big up Alex's Greg's jumper. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> so, he's got... <laughs> of course, he got kitted out in Greg's. Obviously. Uh, no, well, I think we should try and make a special trip for you. Anyway, so um, we're now here at Grange Park Station. Um, interesting looking entrance. It kind of looks like the entrance to a zoo. Um, platform one, you can find trains to Finsbury Park in London, as well as the lion enclosure. Platform two, the trains to Hartford North and Stevenage, as well as the built-in aquarium. The 12.45 has now been cancelled. That's great. Is that, were well, we going to be on that train? We'll have to work it out. Anyway, I'll update you soon. Okay, arriving now is going to be the 12.15 Great Northern service to Stevenage, as we're now here at Grange Park Station, as you can see. Seven, seven one seven zero twenty. Update you when we reach our next stop, Gordon Hill. Right upon now is the 12:19 Great Northern service to Stevenage. That is 717020 and we're now here at Gordon Hill station. Uh, station looks like it's in the middle of nowhere, but this one does have uh, three platforms. Uh, there is a reason for that because the station also acts as a terminus uh, on some like peak time services. But I don't think very many do it now. They just go straight to Stevenage. I think only a few terminate here at Gordon Hill, don't they? Hartford and Stevenage in rush hour. Yeah, it's a rush hour thing they terminate here. Um, right, we'll update you shortly. Okay, after a five minute connection here, 717014. It's now here on the 1229 service to Moorgate. Update you soon. All right, we've now reached Enfield Chase station. The 717014 taking that one. So I know I haven't given a lot of information about the last two stations we were at. But I'm going to do that now. We'll do a bit of catch up. So uh, obviously the last station we were at was Gordon Hill. Obviously before that we were at Grange Park and now we're here at Enfield Chase. Um, so what we'll do, I'll update you soon. I'll update you in a moment even. And we'll talk about these stations. Okay, so we'll start with Enfield Chase. So this station is quite a historic one. Uh, it opened in 1910, but didn't actually have any trains running through it until 1918. The reason for that was because during the First World War, they didn't have enough staff or people to actually run anything. So they didn't have any people to run the train, they didn't have any people to run the station or anything like that. So Enfield Chase was kind of, well, it, it just didn't have anything. Um, the station was actually sited, so it was actually opened in uh, the 19th century, but then a new one was opened in 1910, which was sited uh, a few hundred yards to the east of the existing one. So, yes. Um, the name Enfield Chase as well was adopted in 1924, uh, but that was only because it was to avoid confusion with Enfield Town Station. 
so yes yeah, so people didn't get mixed up and think that this was where to go grange park is in the london borough of enfield as well um station is again opened in 1871 uh route between uh wood green and enfield but wood green is now known as alexandra palace so that opened in 1871 um and grange park uh yeah that's not a lot of history with grange park but uh there is that one um, as for Gordon Hill station, um, the station uh, has a fourth platform, which is now disused. Um, this was once used by the North London Railway between, for services to and from Broad Street. Uh, the third platform is only used in peak time and rush hour for trains to Moorgate from Gordon Hill, sometimes also to London King's Cross. Uh, but uh, yes, that is uh, those stations. Um, Gordon Hill also in Enfield and opened in 1910, so there you go. So that's catch up. Uh, this is Enfield Chase and we'll update you. We're going to head to Cruise Hill next. Alright, we've uh, now made it into Cruise Hill and the part that now is going to be the, the street light we just got off of. WS79, that's the fleet number. As that one heads over to continue its journey into Cruise Hill, it's a hail and ride section run at the moment. As we head over to Cruise Hill Station, uh, that was the 456 we just got off of. However, we've just done the 456. The next bus you see is you're going to be very interested to see, but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. You'll have to wait and see. Okay, after getting off our street light, here we are at Cruise Hill Station. And it is really beginning to rain now, which is lovely. We love the rain. Anyway, um, this station is, uh, we'll talk about a couple of facts about, well, one main fact about it in a minute. We're just gonna obviously walk over and get onto the platform. But yeah, it was about a nine minute walk to get over here because obviously it's not, Liam found the tree. Um, yeah, so. Mr. Tree Surgeon over there. But yeah, so um, we're going to head over to the station platform and go from there. Right, so the station we have reached now is Cruise Hill. Uh, this station is uh, located on the last, this is the last technically London station that is uh, before we cross over into Hertfordshire. Uh, but this station is the most northerly station in London because the border goes all the way up um, right to the point, I believe it's of the uh, oh Alex will know, I think it's the M25 or M4 one and two, Alex will know where the border is I can't remember which one goes along here because obviously I don't drive but Alex, where's the border? where's the border? You said it was right up to the point of somewhere, didn't you, on, on the motorway? Was it the M M25? M25, I thought it was, yeah. So yeah, this station is the most normally point, and it goes up along the M25, crosses the border, and uh, the railway sort of crosses that border at that point near enough as well. So, yeah. As we just talk about uh, Cruise Hill, we are now leaving. Obviously a quick little look at the station, there's hardly any shelter here, which is something to note. This is the 1352 to Stevenage, which we're now taking to Hartford North. 717014. Yes. We had this one earlier on. We pretty much had them all earlier on, to be fair, but yeah. So, that one there. We're now uh, going to head to Hartford North. And uh, we'll update you when we get there. Right, the part right now is, as we're here now at Cuffley, I said Hartford North, it's actually Cuffley we're coming to next, then Hartford North. 717014, this is on... I'll tell you in a second. In the absolute pouring rain, it's on the 1356. Great Northern Service to Stevenage, calling it Bayford, Hartford, North Watton at Stone and Stevenage. 
because we've only got those left now. Stephen has already done, but we've got the other three, Bayford, Hartford North and what that stone to do. Um, talk about the station in a moment and then go from there. It is raining a lot. Welcome to Hertfordshire again. Just walking down the steps here at Cuffley, you notice when you look up here, there is an old First Capital Connect sign that says thank you for travelling with us. And it's raining. You can hear that too. Just a tad. Just a tad. No, it's, it's fine. Whoever said it'd be beautiful today, it's lied to us. I guess that's what happens when you have the aftermath of Storm Kieran. <laughs> Anyway, right. Um, anyway, I take claim, even though it's spelt wrong. Um, I'll update you soon. Go from there. Okay, so this station is Cuffley. Um, we're in Hertfordshire now. Uh, this station, I just had a fly fl fl fly right next to me. Ugh. Um, so yeah, this station is uh, says the district, the village of Cuffley in the Wellen Hatfield district of Hertfordshire. So. We're kind of still very close to London, as you would have guessed. Um, but um, yeah, that is basically the station. Uh, opened uh, in 1910 and was known as Cuffley and Goffs Oak, but it got dropped later on. Uh, but it also allowed Cuffley, the, the station opening, allowed Cuffley to open and expand as an attractive commuter village, which is what Cuffley is known as a commuter village, because you don't know it as anything else, really. Um, so yeah, then there's a commuter village. Uh, the station itself is pretty basically a very quiet place. The station's relatively busy for what, what it is, but the overall village doesn't have a lot of bus service. It only has, I think, the 308, which we're getting later. Um, so yes. But this station, yeah, Cuffley. Not really much to say about it, other than here we are. We'll update you soon. Our next station is definitely, this time, Hartford North. Right, arriving in now is going to be the 1425 Great Northern service to Stevenage, which we're taking to Hartford North, which is 717022. And we'll see this one go out when we get to Hartford North. Right, part that now is going to be uh, the uh, 1435 Great Northern service to Stevenage. We're now here at Hartford North. is 717022 so this is the other station in Hartford we've obviously covered the other one which was Hartford East we covered that that's on the uh, West Anglia main line which goes into London Liverpool Street and is also the terminus point um, and also I don't know if anyone's actually watched ITV before but if you noticed on one of their little continuity ads Hartford East is on it um, but I didn't actually realise that until they did one of a 720 and they did like their little logo and their little colours on it. It was pretty cool. I, I just seen it whilst I was watching telly before and I'd seen that, oh, that's Hartford East. So I don't know if anyone else noticed that. Anyway, this is Hartford North though. This is where it didn't happen. I'm going to update you shortly. There we go. Right, um, this station is Hartford North. Like I say, one of two stations in Hartford. Um, the station is only about a 10 minute walk away from the town centre. Um... The other station before here was called Hartford Calbridge, which was located on the line to Hatfield. Um, but this station uh, also does provide, I, I should say the entire line provides a diversion for the East Coast Main Line. When, it, when the main line through Stevenage is shut, they actually come through here. So I want to come here one day when they're doing that, because that would be pretty cool March. to do that. March. It's always in February, March. February, March time every year. Um, but yes, yeah, so... Just south of Stevenage is a junction called Langley Junction, which is where they go off of to go back. But yes, there's three platforms. Um, platform three, which is that one over there, 
is only used for terminating trains, but that doesn't get used really that often. Rush, one, rush hour again, and one and two mainline platforms for the trains. So, yes, uh, that is Hartford North, uh, like I say, in the big town of Hartford in Hertfordshire. We're now going to head off and go over to Bayford, and we're going to get a bus there. <laughs> we'll update you shortly when we get on said bus. I say that very loosely, you'll find out why. Just outside Hartford North, here it is. Still got the first Capital Connect signage on the outside as well. And as you go inside, Jasper said it looked like an aquarium. As you go in, you can see up there. It just looks like the, the roofing here looks very aquarium-like. Can we have these lights on the top of every station, please? It's they would helpful. be good, wouldn't they? The, the arrows pointing to which barriers you need to use. That would be handy. Right, we're going to walk to Hartford bus station. And then from there, we're going to catch the 308 over to uh, Bayford. Now, when uh, when we get to Bay or when we get to Hartford bus station, we'll show you what's on the 308. But we're not going to say it's it yet. Very fun. Though. It is. That little van there, which you're seeing go down, is what uh, we just got off of. Sorry, I wasn't at Hartford bus station, but we kind of we had to get another bus into the bus station because we were running a bit behind. It turned out it was that one what we needed. So that was the 308, that was a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter City 45. Liam is very tall. So am I. Jasper is very tall. Alex is moderately tall. Mm. And the thing is, all three of them we struggled so much with leg room. We, we had I to do, sit. I didn't, I didn't you were all right, we yeah? Had to sit at, we had to sit at an angle, like sort of facing into the middle, because it didn't fit into the seat in front. Yeah, well, that's because I, no, I had no seat in front of me. What so. did you think? A pain. What do we say, Liam? We don't say bus, do we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't like that. Anyway, it's over. We're now going to Watnut Stone, where we're going to get a proper bus, and then head over to Stevenage, where we yes. On a proper bus. Proper but uh, where we're at now is Bayford. So Hashtag here we are. Justice for Liam's legs. Yes. Hashtag justice for Liam's legs. Comment that. Anyway, I'll date you shortly. Okay, coming in now is, uh, there you go, 1518 service to Moorgate from Stevenage, 717022. Update you shortly. Right, going out now is 717022, heading to Moorgate. There they go to get their photos. I'm just going to be filming. So aside from a lot of the stations that we've been to today, Bayford is the station that has the least amount of facts, but it is basically because the station is located, I would say, in a very small village. Um, that is why the route is served by Mercedes-Benz Sprinters, the 308. 308 is the only route that serves Bayford, by the way, it must also be noted. No other bus service serves here other than the 308. The 308 runs three times a day, and yeah, that's about it. Um, the station is also, well, there's not much facts about the station, but the actual village has won awards for best village, best kept village several times. So this, Hart, this little Hertfordshire village has uh, a bit of fame to it for winning awards, for being a very well kept village. So that is good. Um, the next station we're going to, and it is the last station that we need on the Hartford Loop Line, is Watanat Stone. Um, once Watanat Stone do is done, um, I'm just going to point out now that once Watanat Stone is done, that only leaves a very small bit of Hertfordshire left to do. Uh, if you want to get a summary of sort of uh, what bits of Hertfordshire are left, and Ale Alex might be interested in this as well since he lives near it. But the only bits of Hertfordshire left that I need to do are the, the Watford to 
past St Albans Abbey yeah. line and I think a little bit of the lines of Cambridge yes but other than that I think from memory that is every other bit of Hertfordshire done other than that oh well have you well up to Royston because from Royston everything else is okay yeah so what I mean is I've got to do the line got to do everything up to Royston and then also the St Albans Abbey line um, once that's all done that's Hertfordshire complete so not long left but I haven't got plans for either of those trips yet, so we'll have to see. Anyway, I'll update you soon. Okay, arriving now is the 1529 Great Northern service to Stevenage. And we're gonna be taking this to Watanat Stone, or Watanat Stone, as Alex demands it be pronounced. 717013. There we go, picture's done. Update you when we get to Watnut Stone. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, now departing uh, Watnut Stone is 717013. Heading off to Stevenage only. So, what an at stone. This is the last station we need today. Um, so we'll talk about the station and then we will finish up here because this is where we do finish today. But before we do, obviously I will uh, we'll go through the facts about this station, if there are any, which there should be. Right, so uh, Watnut Stone, this station is located in the village of Watnut Stone in Hertfordshire, uh, about 23 miles from London King's Cross and it's the last station on the Hartford Loop before you reach Stevenage. Um, one fact about this station. So this was in the 70s. This station was used as a set, basically for recording a public film, a public information film called The Finishing Line. The Finishing Line was a public information film to deter children from not playing near the railway. And essentially, I've they used. one on the East Coast Mainline filmed at Fawnsy. Yeah, before, they filmed it here in the 70s. But um, like it was kind of staged like differently. So it's kind of staged as a sports day. And they were sort of. I don't think the set was actually this railway station. I think it was like well, something nearby. But. Um, but it was also. Um, there was a lot of stage blood used, apparently. That was a really weird fact. I didn't expect that. But yeah, this station was used as a set for a public information from back in the 70s. So it obviously wasn't a more modern day one. But uh, yeah, that is uh, an interesting fact about Watnut Stone. I did not expect that at all, but hey ho. That's uh, pretty cool. Um, this. The station opened in 1982, so it is actually newer than some of the others. Uh, there was actually a crowd gathered on the first train that actually went from Watanat Stone to Moorgate in the 80s, 0623 service. The first passenger train to serve the village in almost 43 years. So it was reopened in the 80s, but it was open before that as well, because um, it was only a very short-lived life. It closed 15, it closed 15 years later at in 1939 after opening in 1924 anyway we have got a train approaching and it looks like a freight so we'll see it come through in a second right passing through is going to be a very loud class 66 on a uh, freight which is heading through towards stevenage this one's actually running quite early i'm going to stand back here because i reckon there's going to be a little bit of turbulence but i don't think it's going to be too bad Intermodal.
And there goes that one. Intermodal working, presumably heading in the direction of, I want to say the direction of Peterborough, but I don't think it is. I think it will probably go towards Cambridge, but we'll see. Um, anyway, update you in a second. Right, so as we reach Watnut Stone, I'm going to finish the video from the Every Platform on the Hartford Loop line here. So thank you all for watching today's video of Every Platform. If you have, if you have liked what you've seen, do like and subscribe and do leave any comments because I will get back to them as when I can. And any recommendations are welcome, so please leave us in the comments. I was going to go to Stevenage, but uh, obviously we are in a we're not really going to be there for very long so i don't really think it was worth revisiting it obviously i've done it on the series already and not really getting a lot out of it so i kind of just thought we'll just finish here instead because it won't really make too much difference uh because of our short time there um the only reason we got a short time there is because we're going to do some other stuff uh to kill some time because obviously we finished quite early today so um because of the uh the line itself we only need to cover this bit today so we're going to do some other bits just ride some buses do some other uh, bits and bobs and then we're going to get a 91 back into King's Cross later so that should be nice um, joining today we had Liam Jasper GWL fan and Alex Alex is Alex has ran all the way up there Alex is trains Alex has ran away from me the GW rail fan yes remember good who wants to see your stuff anyway <laughs> I'm going in the video. <laughs> Everyone. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, funny references. Um, anyway, so we're going to um, head off. And, uh, and uh, thank you for watching. The next episode of Every Platform is going to be in Scotland. As I do the Carlisle to Dunlop via Kilmarnock to do that bit. 156 is back again. So that should be nice. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Bye. Right, so um, I'm going to finish the video from uh, the every platform here at Hartford on the Hartford Loop Line now. Um, so thank you all for watching today's video from the Hartford Loop Line. If you have liked what you've seen, please do like and subscribe and do leave any comments because I will get back to them as when I can. And any recommendations are welcome, so please do leave those in the comments. Joining today, we had Alex, Alex's trains. Here's Greg's hoodie. Amazing. Liam over there and Jasper, the GW Rail fan, who... More inactive than Teesside Airport. Yeah, that I won't have a YouTube channel and I never will. Okay, good. Who wants to see your stuff anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Liam. I'm only joking. We would love to see... Liam does a lot... Liam likes aviation and rock music. So... And drum and bass. He has a guitar as well. Did you know... Did you know, guys, Liam plays guitar? He does. Guys, okay. Liam, Liam plays guitar. He does. I've got he, three. he plays an instrument. Plays you play an instrument. What instrument is it? Well, guitar. Amazing. Did you know, Alex, Liam plays guitar? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. See you in the next episode of Every Platform, where I'm going to be in Scotland doing the Carlisle to Dunlop via Kilmarnock. So ScotRail 156 is again, which should be nice. And obviously a few buses in between as well. We've got quite a bit planned for that day. So that should be fun. Thank you for watching. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.